Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the 5% video for Game Week 38. And for many of you I realised realistically this is going to be the last video of mine that you're going to watch this season. So thank you very much for everyone that has been watching this series and watching my videos. I do appreciate it. It's, it's been a very intense season for me. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to put a few videos out during the summer but you completely don't need to watch any of those. It's just kind of to keep YouTube a bit happy. If I don't put any videos out for a few weeks, YouTube gets a little bit uppity. With that said, let's look at Game Week 38, which just finished a few minutes ago. So some of these scores that I'm going to show you may be slightly out. So starting with the goalkeepers, Pickford 8, Raya 5, Onana 5, Vicario 4. For the cheaper keepers, Dubravka 5, and that's all. For the defenders, the expensive defenders, we have Gusto of 13, which was quite surprising. We didn't know if he was going to play or not. And I know certainly a lot of content creators dumped him, so well done if you kept hold of Gusto. Poro 10, Saliba 9, White 6. And that's all there. Trippier's back though, so that's nice. Unless you own him, which I do. In which case it wasn't nice because he took up a space. Uh, the cheaper defenders, uh, Gvardiol 27, well done if you had him. Gabriel 7, Branthwaite 6. The expensive midfielders, KDB got 12, Foden 11, Fernandes 5, Son 4. For the cheaper midfielders, Palmer 14, Gordon 8, Madison 6, Havert 6. For the cheapest midfielders, Eze 8, Johnson 7, Madueke 4, Garnacho 4. For the forwards, the expensive strikers, that's Haaland 15, Hoyland 8. Watkins 5, Isaac 4. For the cheaper forwards, Jackson 7, Solanke 6, Kuna 5. And that's all. So this is the final game week, game week 38. And it's not unusual for players that don't normally play to get played, especially by teams where they've got nothing to play for. So for example, Liverpool, whether they win or lose, they finish third. Now it is Klopp's last game in charge. So you may like to think, ah, oh, the players are going to do their best and really, really go for it. But they're professionals. They should be doing their best every week anyway. Aston Villa are going to finish fourth, whatever happens. So it, there's just a lot less for them to go for. So if it may be that Aston Villa are going to put out a whole different team just because they can and it doesn't matter. But Man City and Arsenal, they have to go for it and do their best. And there's another... There's another handful of teams where it does potentially make a difference to their final position if they win or lose. And their final position, apart from pride in historical books, when you look back, how do you do? There is more money for each position you finish in. So we're largely going to assume that players are going to do their best. But the teams that you know are going for it, like Man City and Arsenal, they are worth targeting if you don't already have their players. Hopefully that made some sense. Anyway, for the goalkeepers, Vicario away to Sheffield United. I wouldn't expect a clean sheet there, but he may get one. He's all right. Raya is the keeper with the best chance that's in the system to get a clean sheet. Obviously, you might have much better things to do. If you've got nothing else to do and you don't have Raya, it's probably worth bringing Raya in and playing him. Apart from that, Onana's all right. The keeper's basically... Yeah. Unless you've got a spare transfer you want to bring in Raya, it's probably not worth doing much. For the cheaper keepers, Petrovic's all right. He's just about the only other green one. But if you have to get Petrovic or Raya, you want to get Raya. The other keepers, nothing to say about them. So for the expensive defenders, we're bringing Trent back in. At home to Wolves, nice attacking player. He may do all right. He's excruciatingly expensive. Probably not worth the money. But it's the last week of the season, so I think it's very nice to have a bit of fun. Absolutely do not take a hit to bring in Trent. It is not worth it. But if you've got nothing better to do and you can afford it, you could bring in Trent. Virgil van Dijk's all right. I wouldn't bother selling him unless it was to swap him for Trent and it didn't cost you anything. So Trippier, he's back. He... He played, I think, one minute officially in the first game of this game week. The second game, he played 61 minutes, maybe. Got a point in each game. So nothing special there. Away to Brentford, probably won't get a clean sheet, a chance of an attacking return. 
I'd say absolutely don't bring in Trippier. And again, if you wanted to swap Trippier for Trent and you can afford to, that's all right. Robertson, currently flagged as injured. If he's only got a yellow flag and you've got enough players anyway, I'd absolutely keep Robertson. I wouldn't bring him in though because he's flagged. And any Arsenal player in the system is worth getting in. So White's good to have. Porro, Spurs. Porro is attacking. Away to Sheffield United. Shocking defence. He's a defender worth having. Saliba, Arsenal. Gusto. Now, Gusto and James are both potentially right back. James is just back from injury, but he just got red carded. So he will miss the next game, which means surely Gusto is going to play. So actually Gusto, and especially only 4.3, he's a player worth having. Regarding the cheaper defenders, and I should have had Gusto on this page, I just messed it up, but hey, it's the last week I'm allowed to. Gabriel's worth having. Delos, definitely don't buy him. Gvardiol's definitely worth having. Don't buy Byrne, don't buy Inori, don't buy Mitchell. I've put Brantwaite as orange. He's probably not going to get a clean sheet away to Arsenal. Probably won't get an attacking return. I put him as orange just to say... If you want to free up a space, for example, you've got Branthwaite, you haven't got Gvardiol and you can afford it, that's a good one to swap around. But any of the defenders I've shown you that are white are fine to change for one that's green. For the expensive midfielders, there's a chance this is going to be Salah's last game for Liverpool. Historically, he has been very good, but his form recently hasn't been great, so I've not made him green, even though he's at home to Wolves. If he was half the price, maybe he'd be green, but... For me, he's not worth it. If you can get him for free, that's fine. If you've got him, absolutely keep him. But I I wouldn't bring him in, is what I'm saying, I guess. I think De Bruyne is all right. The difference between these two, apart from a bit of price, is Man City really has something to play for. And it make, does make a difference. At home to West Ham, the only thing is historically, De Bruyne at home doesn't seem to be as good as he is away. So I definitely wouldn't take a hit to bring in De Bruyne. But if you want to bring him in and it's not a hit, that's okay. Sun is all right away to Sheffield United. I probably wouldn't bring him in. But if you've got him, he's a good player to have. Saka is a good player to have. Currently flagged, but he's often flagged. Odegaard's perfectly good. Foden's good. Fernandez, more or less back from injury. He didn't play 90 minutes today, but he played a lot of the match. Away to Brighton. Brighton have been quite poor for a long time. I think there's a reasonable chance of Fernandes getting a return, but I've not made him green because the other five on this page, I think are definitely better choices. For the cheaper midfielders, Madison, not worth buying, but he's all right if you've got him. Luis Diaz, not worth buying. You can keep him if you've got him, that's all right. Havertz is worth having. Richarlison, I'm saying sell him. He's injured, he's not going to play. Gordon's all right, but it is an away game. But the last couple of away games, he has actually managed to get a return. It's away to Brentford. I'd expect Newcastle have got a reasonable chance of scoring there. I wouldn't bring Gordon in. I wouldn't be bringing any of the white players in, just so you know. You can if you want to. Any white players are fine to keep, but I wouldn't bring them in. Palmer, you need Palmer. Barnes is fine to get rid of if you want to. I wouldn't expect him to be worth having, basically. So... Uh, it's worth swapping Barnes for somebody else for sure. For the cheapest midfielders, Eze's home to Aston Villa. Uh, he could do all right. They've been very good recently, Crystal Palace. In retrospect, going back six or seven weeks, I probably should have had Palace players in here, but it doesn't really matter now. Johnson for Spurs. I like him. He's not quite green. If I had to make a second Spurs player green, it would probably be him. But I wouldn't bring him in. But if you've got him, he's absolutely fine to have. Rice is a good player, nice and cheap. Uh, Gallagher's okay. I wouldn't bring him in. But if you've got him, that's all right. Same with Madueke. Garnacho, nice and cheap. I wouldn't bring him in, but he's cheap. For the strikers, Haaland got something to play for. Home to West Ham. Not worth breaking the bank to bring him in, I think, as in... Not worth taking lots of hits, but if you've got him, well done, he's worth having. Watkins, I wouldn't be buying now. And if you want to sell him to fund something else, that's all right. Away to Crystal Palace. And like I said, Villa have got nothing to play for. Isaac away to Brentford. Wouldn't be bringing him in, but he's fine to have. Very highly owned, so if you don't have him and he does well, it's going to really hurt your rank. Darwin's not worth having. I could have made him orange, but who knows? Maybe the last game for Klopp, he get a hat-trick. 
Hoyland's just scored tonight. He came on for eight minutes, got a goal and a bonus point. So that was very nice. Away to Brighton. It's I wouldn't bring in Hoyland, but if you've got him, he, he's absolutely fine to have. For the cheaper forwards, Jackson, home to Bournemouth. He's been quite good recently. He's a good player. Solanke's fine to sell. Away to Chelsea, reasonably good chance of not getting a return there. And he's moderately expensive. So if you had nothing else to do, you could swap Solanke for Jackson. Kuna's nice and cheap. Away to Liverpool, probably won't get anything, but he's nice and cheap and he allows you to do other stuff. Same with Munez, nice and cheap. Away to Luton, so Munez may get something, uh, but he, he's cheap and he should be playing, so that's great. We're now going to look at the bench order and the captaincy choices. This is just my suggestion. You just do whatever you like, but if you've been following this through this season and using this as a guide or religiously following it, you've probably done all right. Ariola away to Man City, if he plays, it's not worth having. Dubravka away to Brentford. Pope was on the bench, and it may be that Pope gets a run out, so I've got him low on the bench. Of course, with a goalkeeper, if he's benched in real life, he's unlikely to come on. But maybe with it being Newcastle's last game, Howard do something weird, and he swap the keepers around at half time or something. So I'd be reluctant to play Dubravka if you've got a better keeper. Pickford away to Arsenal, no clean sheet there. Henderson, home to Villa, perhaps, probably not. Onana, away to Brighton, may get a clean sheet. Leno, away to Luton, possibly a clean sheet. Vakari away to Sheffield United, possibly a clean sheet. Petrick at home to Bournemouth, reasonable chance. Rare at home to Everton, the best chance of our keepers to get a clean sheet. For the remaining players, the first player you see you've got, I suggest, is position three in your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. So Aiton Nori, Branthwaite, Mitchell, Byrne, Dallow, Barnes, Garnacho, Kuna, and Darwin. Darwin is so low because I assume he's not playing and he's going to come on for some of the second half. If the lineups get leaked and you happen to be doing this just before the deadline and we know Darwin's starting, I'd absolutely have Darwin much higher than this. I've just put him there because I'm assuming he's going to get 20 minutes. Trippier, Solanke, Munez, Gordon, Maduweke, Gallagher, Rice, Eze, Madison. Virgil van Dijk, Hoyland, Porro, Johnson, Luis Diaz, Robertson, Fernandez, Isaac, Watkins, Gusto, Saliba, White, Gabriel, Trent, Sun, Odegaard, Jackson, KDB. There are seven players I'm not showing on this page. That's because if you have them, you're playing them. Regarding captaincy, I think Haaland is probably going to be the most captain this week and he's probably the safest choice. Other people you could choose from... Saka, Salah, Palmer, Havertz, Foden, they're all perfectly good choices. One of these is your vice, and one of those is your captain. Perfectly good. Try and avoid two from the same team in case the game gets postponed or it gets abandoned, or there's a sickness bug within the camp just before the deadline, and both the players you choose miss out. If you don't want to choose these, then I'd say any Arsenal player is fine to choose, and any Man City player is fine to choose within the system. So with that in mind, you should better get someone good. As for the background picture, <laughs> we're at the end of a long season and they say it's a marathon and it really is a marathon. And when you're making content and you've still got a full-time job, there's even more of a slog. So it's been quite an intense season for me. Uh, it's quite nice for me that we're near the end, but I will put some more videos out in the summer, like I said. And I hope you've been enjoying the content all right. So there we have it. That's the suggestions for what to do in Game Week 38. Now, it's up to you how you want to play this. For myself and the mini leagues I'm in, my position's not going to change unless I do something really silly, like take a 40-point hit. I'm not going to go up. I'm not going to go down for the ones that I care about. So I can afford to take a hit and just have some fun. So last season, I think on the last day of the season, I took a 12-point hit to make sure I had three Leicester players. I had Leicester as my team and they were going down. I just wanted to enjoy the occasion. So if you've got nothing to play for and you want to make several changes, that's fine. If where you're on your league you're happy with and you've got someone possibly catching you, play it safe. Probably don't take any hits and just get in a popular player. For example, Raya or 
someone like that just just something safe if you're chasing it might be okay to take a minus four just make sure it's a good player you're getting in and obviously don't get in a player that the team above you's already got because it's not going to help you you're gonna to have to take a risk basically i hope that makes sense thank you very much everyone who's watched watched the video and been watching these series i'm currently intending to do something similar next year i've got ideas how to improve it but I'm not absolutely committing to it, but I probably will do it. Okay, thanks. Bye.